Um, yeah, now let's let's move on to the next speaker. Um, over to you, Prof. Raddy. Thank you. I hope I can share my screen. Yes, yes, I think she will allow you to share the screen. Okay, I'm uh, George Rading from the University of Nairobi. Uh, the topic of my presentation is dealing with the menace of plastic waste, uh, conversion of waste into a resource. Uh, the outline, I'm going to give a background to the problem. I'm going to give a, 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 the approach that we are using to tackle the problem. The key questions that we need to answer, I'm going to talk a little bit about the preliminary results we have got, and then the way forward. Now, the menace of plastic waste is well documented, but also the quarrying process, uh, the process that we use to produce the uh, aggregates and so on, used for road construction, buildings, dams, and so on, that process produces about 25% uh, query dust, which is also a waste, and uh, which we, uh, we also don't, don't know anything to, to do with, with that waste. So this, this ongoing research then seeks to utilize the two waste streams. And what we, we tend to do is to combine the two to produce roofing tiles. In doing that, we are also solving a development, development or problem of providing housing. Now the approach that we are going to use, the work is being undertaken by teams from the universities of Nairobi and Southampton in, in the UK. Okay. We are treating this as a composite materials problem. So we are treating the quarry dust, plastic mix, as a polymer matrix particulate composites. And we are seeking optimum parameters, the parameters that would optimize uh, the properties that we need from our tile. The key questions that uh, the whole research seeks to answer are how much of each of these waste streams is available? Now, in the case of plastic waste, what is the mix? How much high density uh, PE, for example, is there compared to P PET? What is the spectrometry, size, distribution, morphology, ETC of the quarry dust? How do these uh, impact the performance of the resulting roofing tiles? with respect to the strength and water permeability. Those are the two key properties that you want from a roofing tile. What is the optimum particle volume fraction, size, morphology, spectrometry? What is the optimum matrix choice? Do we use a single plastic? And if so, which one? Do we use a blend? And if so, in what proportions? What is the effect of additives? We all know that used pl plastics have got plasticizers, fire retardants, dyes, ETC. How do these impact on the properties of whatever we are going to produce? Now, what is the effect of any choice uh, of any choice we make on the processability and economic viability? Whatever we choose, is it economically viable? Uh, what is the nature of the interfacial bond? We all know that in composite materials, the key thing is the interfacial bond, the bond between, uh, in this case, the particle and the matrix. What is the nature of this in this case here? And how does it vary with the, the factors we have, we have just enumerated? Now then assuming that extrusion is the method that we are going to use to produce the uh, material, how does the fact that we are dealing with hard particles affect the extruder? because we just can't use the a normal plastic extruder since that extruder does not account for hard particles, that's, uh, the rock particles that we are going to include in the mix. What is the effect of process parameters, temperature, ETC of the properties? This is particularly so because uh, plastic waste contains several plastics with different melting points, ETC. So what temperature do we choose for our processes? Now, can the, the process, after we have optimized it, can, we, can it have a process that reduces porosity and agglomeration? 
of the sand particles because these affect the composite properties. Now, the preliminary sample that I'm going to present, first of all, are specific to uh, plastic waste in and around Nairobi. So the figure I'm going to show, uh, figure one, shows a landfill uh, of plastic waste from which where we sourced our plastic waste. And the next figure shows the distribution of, uh, uh, of the various plastics, how much PE is there, PET, ETZ. And then we noted that a good number of uh, the plastics are unmarked, so they could be sorted out into various uh, categories by uh, uh, easily. And we had we had to test them by using FTIR. And after doing all of this, we determined that uh, polyolefins and PET make up the bulk of the plastic waste. So that is. An ISO of a plastic waste site somewhere in Nairobi. You can see buildings in the background. So it's very far from a residential area. Yeah. And that represents the distribution of plastics that we get from the waste. So we have got high density uh, polyethylene, PET, and marked PP, and some. Uh, stuff which came basically from uh, Kenya Airways, the airways, the, the airline, plus the other parts. But you can see high, high density polyethylene, PET, PP, and then these are marked ones, make up the bulk of the plastic mix. Now, we also did uh, try to determine the particle size distribution of the quarry dust. And we did this using X-ray CT. And the, range, the size ranges range from 64 microns to five, to 5 millimeters. And that shows that distribution of the uh, quarry dust. This is equivalent sphere diameter and the frequency. You can see most of them lie in the uh, low diameter range. Now, to solve the problem of the extruder, we have to design a special extruder. Now that next figure will show the key points of the design. The modifications we had to make was one, we, have, we had to have a high length to diameter ratio. Then both the screw and the barrel had to be made from uh, chromium molybdenum steel with a hardness in excess of 950 HV. To handle the uh, hard particles. And then uh, our extruder has, has two hoppers, one for the plastic and one for the dust. So that is the screw, this in this case attached to the motor. You can see that, that the length to diameter ratio is high. And that is how we redesigned the hopper. So we have got one hopper for the plastic, the other hopper for the quarry dust, and then the two mix before they are fed into the extruder. So we have produced uh, prototype uh, tiles and test specimen, and uh, very briefly, I'm going to show some of the results of the uh, of our tests. So the next figure will show a representative test tile test results. And one thing we note is the high variation in properties of nominally similar specimens. Those are these are tensile uh, stress strain curves. Those three specimens we tested were supposed to be nominally the same. They were from the same mix. But you can see that there is quite some variation in the tensile strength, and there, there is quite some variation in uh, the strain at fracture, which means that uh, what we are getting from this is that the properties of the materials vary widely. Now, to try and see why this variation, we did fractography and X-ray uh, CT. And the next figures show the results of this. Now, that is a X-ray CT scan of the materials. And you can see that there is a very high level of porosity, even though on the outside, it looks like everything is intact in, in the interior of the sample and of the specimen, 
there is quite some porosity. The black sites we see there are porosities, and in this schematic here, red markings show the porosity in the, in the uh, material. And so one thing we get is that there is a very high level of porosity. And also agglomeration. So the fracture surfaces from FEM again are shown. So we can see, sorry, I your pardon. Your pardon. Yes, that's where you are. Uh, we can show, we can see the particles. Most importantly, where you can see the yellow arrows, those show the points at, at which there was decohesion between the particle and uh, the matrix. All those uh, arrows show points of decohesion between the uh, particle and the matrix. Uh, and in the next slide, you can see the, a crater, which is caused by decohesion from a particle de, uh, depending from the matrix, and this acts as a site for uh, in, crack initiation. So what we get from this, uh, we also try to get the effect of volume fraction on uh, the results, and we, we, we see that there's only a slight increase in the UTS volume fraction up to 20%, followed by a decrease. So that, for example, which, uh, is the variation of, of particle volume fraction or strength with particle value fraction. So there is a rise, a slight increase in the strength between pure uh, PP, in this case, the matrix was pure PP, and 20%, uh, but after that, there's a decrease and if we increase the volume fraction, the decrease is more. So that is a general trend, a slight increase and then a decrease. So the indications that we get from our preliminary results are that agglomeration and porosity are issues that we have got to address. We also get that the bonding at the particle matrix interface dominates the fracture. And the tile prototype that we, we, we made incidentally we compared this with the Kenya standard for clay and concrete roofing tiles, and it wasn't very far off with respect to strength and water permeability. So going forward, we intend to apply a combination of experimentation and mathematical modeling to define the most appropriate way to make roofing tiles from waste plastics and quarry dust. In so doing, we will have turned a menace into a resource. But we'll also have contributed to a solution of a developmental issue of housing. I wish to acknowledge my colleagues at the University of Nairobi, the colleagues at the University of Southampton, NRF Newton Utafiti Fund, who, who uh, funded the whole project, and of course, Arua COE men. Thank you very much. That brings me to the end of my presentation. I hope I'm, with, I'm within time. time. Th thank you very much, Professor, Professor Radin. Well, yeah, you were on time. You, uh, you were on time. You still had an extra more minute to complete, but thank you very much for that presentation. Your project is really interesting. <laughs> um, thank you. All right.